fresh Mexican onions that I use. I love using these. And I'm going to put in all spice balls also. So, first things first, we are going to cut up this cabbage, all the vegetable spirit that's going to go in. In the rice cooker that I have in the steamer, the cabbage shouldn't take no more than, I think it's like seven minutes. I already washed it off, so I'm real funny about lettuce or anything, because it does have worms. If it's not cleaned properly. So, I'm going to go ahead. I cut and then I go ahead and add my cabbage in first. Just break it up some more. And when I do cook my cabbage, I don't cook it where it gets soggy at all. I already have blueberries and drop off that I have to make. And I always try to reach my deadline. If I can't, I'll always let my customers know. I also let my customers know when it is just extremely too far because I'm the only one that does prepare the food. And most meals, as far as meat, is always cooked to order. My sides are always pre-done. Unless I have to get up and make them that day. And I do these small pans now. Um, so I can keep making stuff on a daily basis. Okay, so right now, this is the amount of cabbage that I have in here. Put a little bit more. And I normally do cook the cabbage in sessions, meaning I cook enough for like five or six orders, wait for some more orders to come, and I'll cook it again. That's how I prepare it. So, I have the cabbage in there. I like to get the carrots that are already shredded, put those in there. And these were washed off also. I don't care if it comes in the bag. Everything in the bag needs to be clean, but not with no soap and water. Some of these videos I have seen, I have seen people washing chickens off with soap and water, bathing them like they kids, but that's not the case. I am gonna go ahead and put one of my scotch bonnet peppers inside, not too big, but not too small. Put that in there. Go ahead and cut up my purple onion. So I will be preparing both my rice and my cabbage inside the same crock pot, but separately. I'm doing the cabbage first because it doesn't take that long. And like I said, I do have orders that I want to get out in on time so I can come back and finish my pork sauce that I made yesterday. I have to go ahead and give that a seasoning. So as you can see, I slice the onions. You can do white onions. I do purple onions for the color of it. And to me, they're just more better. So it's your preference. You can use purple or the white onions or the actual sweet onions. You can use those. But we're using onions. I use the purple ones. For the color, which goes with the presentation, which I'm very big on. Ooh. I'm burn my eyes. Skin off. Ooh. Okay. You'd think I'd be used to the onions by now, but I am not. They still set me up. Okay. More onions. 
this is the way I prepare cabbage. So, if you can prepare your way, I'm gonna prepare my way. Basically, I just, I'm doing these as a guide because I get so many questions and people ask me, how do you cook this, how do you cook that? So I'm showing you guys how I prepare my meals. Okay, so these are one yellow, two red. up a little certain kind of way just cutting them up I had to start I got orders that's my daughter though with the camera gonna wait on her because I have orders but she's here now Ma'am, I'm showing how to do cabbage right now. I'm crying because the onions got me. So, it's going to be nice and colorful and delicious at the same time. These I didn't care how they was cut up. Okay, so this is how the cabbage looks. I go ahead and mix it around, toss it around with my hand, making sure I do not break this scotch bonnet paper. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a few all spice balls. Oh, that's too many. That's a few. I still season my cabbage, onion powder. Another seasoning that I always use. Very good. What about them up there? What? Can you show them? Oh, I'm sorry. I have two cameras going on. Okay. A little bit of black pepper. As you can see, that's what I'm at. Great value. Mm -hmm. Great value. Just a little. And I always put in Mice, garlic. Right. Now, to toss that up, I am going to need a spoon. And in a pot. Oh, It's not too late. Which one? Pick one. Yeah, I got your phone. Yeah. Who is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just think it's keep falling. Okay. 
I don't know. Pause, bro. Okay. Okay. I'm going to start doing the live, so give me one moment on my other device. What you did on yesterday? Okay. Okay, you live? Not yet. Man, I'm so sorry, y'all. No, I'm not live, but no views yet. Okay. Good afternoon. I am going live. I have two devices going on, so please bear with me. This is a stool turkey wings, steamed cabbage and rice and beans. Right now, I'm preparing the cabbage. Okay. Good morning, Instagram land and Facebook land right now. YouTube land, this will be posted later on once I'm finished. Okay, so I'm going to go do a recap. I am preparing fresh cabbage. Steamed cabbage. Okay, so I have cabbage, which I already done cut up. I have my purple onions. I cut up a few of these mini peppers. I use fresh mice garlic, just a little. I use my allspice balls. I use my Goya. I prefer the red top, my preference. Also, ooh, I put some onion powder in. Onion powder, I have to use both, I'm so sorry. Goya, this, clean up as I go. Cause I'll be tired when I'm done. A little bit of black pepper. And that's basically it. And I also use a scotch bonnet pepper for my cabbage. When I put it in, I try to make sure that it does not bust because it's gonna be extremely hot. I just put it in there so it can get a little buzz. Okay. So this is how my cabbage looks so far with all the vegetables and everything in there. The onions, I do have a coworker who cannot eat onions, so I'm gonna make her own little side of cabbage. Shakira, um, Sherrod, I'm sorry, wrong person. And this is the steamer that I use. I got this out of Walmart. It cooks very fast. So I often steam only just my cabbage and my rice and beans in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pump this up. You do not add water to the inside. You add the water inside of this. And I believe this only cost me like 20 bucks from out of Walmart. So I'm going to go ahead and add my water. And like I said, I do not like to overcook my cabbage. I know y'all don't like soggy cabbage. I don't even eat cabbage. That's the crazy part. Okay, so that should be enough of water. I actually added three cups. Let me um, stress this out. Okay, so again, this is how the brown stool turkey wings came out. Oof, I don't want the waste out. Okay, so I did not make the gravy as of yet. As you can see, they are falling off the bone. Oof, but I am going to still make my gravy. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the oven until I'm ready to deal with it again. but the oven is still hot, so no, it's gonna go on top of the oven. Okay, so now, steamer, open it up. Put my cabbage in, and like I said, the rice is all, I mean, the water's already in there. Turn it on, I hit steam, so it's gonna be five minutes. So, if it's not 
cook down enough, meaning not soggy, I will run it again, but I always check it after the five minutes is done. Go ahead and close that up. Put it aside, damn it. Yeah. Okay, so that's gonna cook. So now, after that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my rice in the same rice and steam cooker. It's gonna be white rice, but I'm making rice and beans, and this is what I use. Any type of jasmine rice, I prefer to use. So this is what I've been using lately. I use these, which is the red kidney beans, and it already has the coconut milk inside. Always check your date on your canned products. A lot of us don't. We just get it and grab and go. Stop doing that before you have your whole household sick. Okay, so I'm going to use do these two cans. I'm going to use my all-spice balls. I am going to use a scotch bonnet pepper. And like I said, everything that I make is the way I make it. And people love it. I will put one bay leaf in. And I also do put a little bit of thyme. Okay, this is how I prepare my rice and beans, which will be done shortly after the cabbage is done. Okay. In the meantime, in between time, I will be putting up my other little dainty products, my veggies, back in the refrigerator. Always try to clean and go. So with that being said, I'm gonna have my daughter swing around here as I get ready to prepare to make the gravy for the stew turkey wings. I know y'all keep saying, your daughter, Sharice, you don't got no daughter. Yes, yes I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have pretty Shay Shay and I have Raquel Williams. Yes. Okay. You said that girl. <laughs> Those are my daughters. Okay. Daughters. Period. I do have a grandbaby. His name is Logan. Prince Logan. That's what I call him. He is a doll. But that's neither here nor there. Just know. <laughs> If I say they my daughters, they my damn daughters, okay? Thank you. <laughs> you aggravating. <laughs> Whatever. I know Brickell is saying, Ma. Oh, Ma, you had to say my. Yes, ma'am, I had to say your whole name. Sorry. It's your aggravating ass daddy. But anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and put my products up. And again, let's do a recap. This is the onion powder that I use and the brand. I love this brand. This is Italian dressing that I use. Like I said, I use Great Value, which is the Walmart brand. Whatever your preference is, that's your preference. This is mine. So, you can cook very good dinners with actual... It doesn't have to be name brand to me. As long as you get the point across that your stuff is well seasoned. I'm squatting down because how my device is recording. Hello. So, I'm going over here. Italian seasoning. And this is a recap on the stew turkey wings, the onion powder that I use, the Italian pack seasoning, the oxtail seasoning that I use as of yesterday. I did not use Goya yesterday on the stew turkey wings, but I did use it today for the cabbage. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my stuff up and we're gonna get ready to prepare the gravy which is very simple. You're going to be amazed on how to make it. I have to find a picture of my grandmother, Carrie, who was the big cook and who kept the family together. And I also want to go over some stuff that we don't do anymore in our households. We have these nice dining room tables and we don't have family sitting to them. They should not just be sitting there collecting dust or just being prepared later on or fixed up nicer when it's a holiday. Every day should be a holiday. If you have all of your kids in the home, single mothers don't feel bad. You can feel the burden of a man as far as your kids, as far as finding out what's going on. The best way to do that is if they're sitting at the table eating a well-cooked meal and just conversating with their mother. You sit there and pick their brains. I used to do it to my kids all the time. 
So when I was growing up, I'm 42 years old. Tell you some insight about myself. I'm 42 years old. When I was growing up, it was a must that we sat at the dining room table to eat dinner. Okay? It was a must that we sat to the dining room table and ate dinner. And I did have both parents in the home. So we don't have that going on anymore in this day and time. Not as much as, you know, the kids should be sitting down with both parents or, hey, mom, if it's just you, you and your kids. That's more of, you know, your home, all the craziness going on outside. Sit down and talk to your kids. It doesn't have to be necessarily on, you know, in their room. Sit down while you're eating a good meal. You know, we need to bring that back in the household. So, getting watched by my grandmother. I have a grandmother. She's deceased now. Her name is Carrie. Carrie Camardi. She taught me so much on not to take no bullshit. Um, I was one of the grandkids. They used to get on her nerves, staying in her kitchen, if she, even though she'd tell me to get out of her kitchen. But she cooked all these meals to... That back then, it was like good food brought families closer together. You know, somebody always wanted to go to Gigi house or Nana house, you know, because you know she's going to cook. So at the time, my mom and dad, you know, they just have to work. So my grandmother, she watched all of her grandkids. It used to be a house full of us. And I knew what breakfast, lunch, and dinner was if my mom didn't come pick us up before dinner time and a snack. Half the time, we used to get put out before well, after lunchtime, because if we made too much noise while she was watching her stories, oh, we was getting put out whether you had shoes on or not, your ass was going outside over town, sitting outside until her box go off with her stories. That's what she used to call it. But my grandma Carrie was very dear to me. I saw a lot. We don't do that anymore. We are so used to now, you know, making the kids do everything, which is good because you don't want to handicap your kids. I have three sons that I handicapped in a way but I tried to fill a void of being mom and dad in the house. I wanted my kids to have, you know, everything that two parents of a household can bring. I did that and then some. My kids did not want or need for nothing, okay? Other than a stabilized man in their life or whatever, which they always did have my dad, you know, even though he was very hard to deal with. But... I'm going to show you an area that needs to be filled more with either both parents or mom. You sit down with your kids and talk. I'm telling you, you sit down and talk. They eating a good meal. The food hypnotize them. They'll start talking. That's how you get to know your kids. Not saying to be, you know, a friend, but just get to know your kids at a, a nice, quiet, calm setting. They'll get more comfortable. The more you do it, trust me, they'll be saying, mom. We ain't gonna sit at the kitchen table. Even if something is wrong, you just never know. Your kids always bring you joy and you can find out what's going on with them. That's what I used to do. Me and my three boys. It got to a point, it was me, my three boys, my nephews. It was like the amigos. Like I had a daycare in my house every day. Okay? So, um, I wanna show you an area. Like right now, all my kids are grown, but they're gonna always be my babies. I want to give a shout out to my oldest son, Marquise Parts. We call him Booby. He's in California. He is the reason why I started. I'm just giving y'all an insight why this um this is steaming. And I know I said I was gonna do the gravy, but I got sidetracked. But I had um I have an older son, and like I said, my house was the go-to house where if your mama put you out or y'all was going through something back then, you know. I was a house. I done found kids sleeping in my closet. Well, not my closet, in my son's closet. Like, it used to be crazy at 188. And this is in Miami, Florida. But to speed up the story, I was a correction officer, a corporal officer for four and a half years in Miami. But I worked in Broward. And I overheard my son that was talking to his friend. They was, you know, preparing for college. And he was like, you know what? I'm not going to go. I'm going to go ahead and stay, you know, here in Miami because my mama always complains she don't got no money. But, you know, as a single mother, we're going to always complain that we don't have no money. And we can have money it's just for a rainy day, especially when you're dealing with teenage boys. So to make a long story short, when I heard him tell his friends that he was going to stay and all of them was leaving to go, shout out to Sean and Stanker. Those was his main two ace coon booms um, when we stayed in Miami. Um, they were all leaving to go to college and he wanted to go. 
So my son has always been quiet, but very sneaky. But anyway, so I did my research. I said, okay, what would my family do? So the Bahamian side of my family, whenever we was getting ready to have like a family reunion, anything, we used to always have dinner sales. I mean, dinner sales that used to be banking right on 46 and 27, no, 46 and 22nd Avenue behind Joe's stove. That's where my auntie Vita stayed. I used to get on her nerves, God rest her soul, about food also. So every piece of item that I make, I kind of got it from, well, I did get it from a family member. Either they're still here or they have passed away. So I try to keep that going on. And that's because I was always the child that wanted to be curious. I was standing on step stools, which I have a step stool now to this day in my kitchen. So I have a friend that has kids. They like to come in the kitchen every now and then, but I still put them out because anything can happen and I want to be responsible. But back to the story with my son. So I started selling dinners. I did not have a name. I had a Facebook page, of course. I had an Instagram page, but at the time I was hustling and selling shoes, accessories, clothes, everything. So I was like, son, I'm gonna go ahead and have a dinner. So I overheard your conversation. He was like, what, my? I said, okay, I gotta get a name. So he was like, okay, ma, you're Sharice and you're in your kitchen. So I went on ahead and went at that time with Sharice's kitchen, which I do have tattooed on my hand. Ooh, that cabbage smell good. And I got this done by Joe in Miami. It needs to be refixed, but I fell in love with it. But I did get, because I was always true to my brand and loyal to myself. So, it got to a point where <clears throat> I came up with the name. I changed my whole Instagram page from Sharice's Pizza, Pieces to Sharice's Kitchen. And I just started advertising 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 so after a while i was literally making more money in my home than i was going to a nine to five job which was at brown detention center which they call the tent and it was a time when i used to always bring food in there for my staff didn't want no money i just wanted to you know Spread my love. My gift was to cook. So I used to provide chicken sauce at the time. I used to always make this amazing seafood pasta salad, which one of my co-workers, which is like a big brother to me, big little brother, Officer Barker. Well, no, Corporal Barker. And he used to always say, nah, baby, that's sex. You cooking, you bringing sex in here because the food was so good, especially my seafood pasta salad, which I'm going to show you guys on how to make it. I'm not going to show you directly how I make it. Well, the ingredients, but I am going to definitely get you close to it. And that's one of the recipes that I had to keep trying and trying to get it right until I got it right, um, which was passed down to me from my Auntie Vita, God rest her soul. So, I became so big till I didn't even expect it. I had to have surgery on both of my hands. I had copper tunnel, very bad. I also had tendonitis, very bad. Okay, it's no cure for it. So, God was preparing me and I didn't even know it. So, at the time, I was a corporal officer. I was on a hospital duty. It was an inmate that got beat up so bad till it was a good thing and it was a bad thing. He got beat up and the good thing about it, he went to the hospital in time enough because later on we found out that he had a severe brain condition and he had to wind up having like, I think, seven surgeries on his brain. So they had to do certain parts of his brain, sew it up, see if it'll heal, then go to the next part, okay? And then with me, I was in a steady pat in my hands. Ooh, they hurt, they swole, you know, us black people. We hear our mama, girl, just go run your hands under some water, girl, they might be asleep. Now, I was actually losing the feeling in my hands. So even when it was a cold blue and I had to restrain an inmate, they were slipping right out of my hand, and they know that I was with the shits. So I kind of started seeing something was wrong with my hand, but I didn't want to face it. So while I was in the hospital, on hospital duty with this particular inmate, the doctor wound up checking me. So he had me call the head officer at that time on duty and said, you have a young officer here that has a severe problem with her hands, and she's about to lose 
you know, the sensation, the feeling out of her hands. So to speed up the story, I wind up having surgery on both of my hands. Pop a turn of surgery. Um, it worked for me. I done heard hard stories how it doesn't work for everybody else. But to me, God was preparing my hands for more strength because of what he was going to put upon me. So I had surgery on both of my hands. Um, later on, I continued to cook. Then it got to a point I started getting aggravated as hell going to work. So one day when I was trying to send my son to college because he did get accepted into FAMU, my job acted so funky with me. Now, mind you, I was at that building for four and a half years. I never, I only took one vacation. I only think I took a whole full week off, but they didn't appreciate my service, nor they didn't respect the fact that I wanted to take my son to school. I had already paid for an orientation for me and him. So to make a long story short, I cleaned out my locker. I wrote a letter of resignation. They would not take it. Um, they was like, no, it ain't that serious. They felt like because I had surgery on my hand that I was out, you know, for leisure. But I was out, you know, in pain. I had to heal. So basically, I wrote that letter, resignation letter. They thought I was playing. I went on the head and took my son to school, went to the orientation, was able to go to his graduation. They even told me I had to find somebody to work my shift for me to attend my son's graduation. Not me. Y'all ass will be missing an officer on that day. They was missing an officer for a week while me and my kids, godmother, Rachel, took my son to Tallahassee, okay? So, I cleaned out my locker, kept going back to work. So, I got to a point, I said, fuck this, I ain't going back. I cleaned out my locker. Then God told me, I was going to take my stuff back in there because something had happened. And I said, damn, I need to work. So, then I started doing no call, no shows. And every time I looked in the back of my seat, it was my stuff that I took out of my locker. God kept saying, you take that stuff back in there, you're gonna be chained in, you ain't gonna know how to leave. I didn't take it back in there. So July 3rd, I stepped out on faith. They called me, pause, you ain't gonna come, you ain't gonna come to work, man. Okay, man, we need you, we need you. I said, yeah, I'ma come. It probably was like five something in the morning. I packed a true religion bag up with all my uniforms, all my patches and my damn badge. And I took that down to the Brown Detention Center and turned that shit in. I ain't look back. Okay, so the moral of the story is sometimes you have to step out on faith. God will show you signs. God will even prepare you for the journey that he's going to put you on. And who would have knew? So I got so big in my house that I had to later on move out. My house was big. I had a 2,500 square feet house at the time in Miami. My kids had a pool table. I had to fuck that up because I had to make space to put stuff. So I wound up having flour and all types of stuff on there. It was just a mess. But I had literally transformed my house into a restaurant. All because I wanted to send my son to school. I was determined to send him to school. So to make a long story short, I did send him to school. I was able to send him to school. He had wants and needs once again. My kids never wanted for anything other than a consistent man in their life or their sorry ass daddies in their life. But that's another story. But anyway, that's how I became you know, the queen of food porn. I call myself, I call myself queen because I have been called bitches and hoes so many times, you know, for decades by one of my kids. Dad was, which he was very abusive. And I started believing that. So at the same time, you know, at a later age, I said, okay, it took my mom to tell me, hey, you have always tried to be a parent with this person, let it go. She didn't care if he was coming about a thousand dollars worth of food. She told me to let it go. You know, my son, well, our son is old enough to deal with his dad on his own, but I just wanted to be called something else other than bitches and hoes or feel like I was a bitch and a hoe, you know, at that time. So that's how I named myself and gave myself the name Queen. Also, my grandfather on my dad's side, well, my dad's dad, the Bahamian. He used to call me Queen or Mahogany. So I ran with either Mahogany. I'm going to run with either Mahogany or Queen. I picked Queen. So that's just a little brief, you know, briefing on how I actually started cooking. It was because of my son, um, Marquise, which we call Booby, because I wanted to send him to school properly, and I refused to let him stay when he wanted to go. Okay, that's just a mother's love. Single moms, you can do it. Trust me. I never thought that I would be cooking to have a passion. I already knew I knew how to cook, but 
but I didn't think it was going to take off like it did now. So to me, years later, because I actually started in either 2011 or 2012, I'm still cooking now. I did have a restaurant. I'll tell you about that story on how I lost it. And if you do plan on selling dinners or anything that you want to do, you're going to lose friends, you're going to lose family members, everybody's going to start showing their true colors. And that's just period, point blank. Okay? So now I don't talk so much. Let's check on this cabbage. Oh, shit. Okay. Get closer if you can. And I'm going to get closer. Yeah, I probably can't see because of the stain, but you see how that looks? It is not soggy and it is not that hard. So I'm satisfied with how it looks now. Oh, let me just, oh, how do I, oh, y'all bear with me. Chill. I'm going to get it right, y'all. This is video number two. But the cabbage is you know, it looks good to me as far as the texture. And like I said, I don't like to sell mine soggy. So right now it's nice. It's at a nice stage right now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, take it out of the pan, and I'm going to go ahead and start my rice and beans because I do have orders that I have to get out. Okay, so I'm putting this back. Hopefully it ain't backwards. I don't know. Okay. So turn this off. on out the way so now you can actually see how it looks you see the scotch bonnet pepper oh no you can't see it Whew. hold on you see the scotch bonnet pepper is still together it's kind of mush that means that you know some of the flavors got out which is fine as long as it did not bust completely So now you have the cabbage. Now I'm gonna do my rice. The measuring cup is inside. I don't use it so many times, I kind of know what needs to be done. So, got my rice. I add my beans. Like I said, I use the beans. Oh, freak. The red beans that already has the coconut milk inside. Okay, no, don't do me like that. Okay, it's time for a new can opener. 
And I know some of y'all saying, girl, you opening that can open the wrong, honey. This is how I was taught. I don't see people do it. This, oh, shit. What the hell was that? A little bug. I don't see people. Open it the other way. I can't do it. So I'm doing it the way I can. You got in your hat. Huh? You got in your hat. You can go get this on my bed. Girl, you gotta represent your brand, girl. You gonna get it? I'm gonna throw it off. Okay, it's covering this up for the bowl. I just attacked me. If I was at work, I would have went home. Okay. So, do not do bitches and bugs. <sighs> I don't know. It's so hard to wash my mouth, but I wanna just be myself. If I could be myself, that means that the video will go smoothly, calm, and collected. All right. Take a can. I'm going in. All spice balls. Oh, it's too big. For the rice, I don't use peppers. I always try to find the smallest peppers in the pack. That's going in there. What else? Shit. Oh, kind. I normally use fresh time, but I have this. You don't want to use that much. I don't. Because time will overpower your food. Okay, so now, even though this rice is brown, I'm not sorry. It's white. That's what I put it on. I don't change the color. The coconut milk, it does just a little bit in the beans, so that's fine. You can put it on white rice. What the hell did I? All right, so that's going to go ahead and cook. Okay. My daughter's laughing at me because she's saying pop bubble in the stock. Ooh. Ooh. Well, all the time she's saying that. Let me put some of this in there. Okay. Oh, come on now. The boat? Yeah. I'm getting ready to make my gravy. What the hell is my water? Let me get the sun in the right side of me. Don't do that. Hmm. I don't know this shit. I'm having a hard time. Oh, Lord have mercy. God, this is just a mess nowadays. I don't want to cooperate. This freaking iPad is pissing me off. 
Mm -mm. Girl, how in the hell? I think the ones is on front. It stayed on the front. Okay, so try out till we get it right. With this damn iPad. Okay, y'all see the stool taking rings? Y'all see the stool taking rings? I'm about to burn the hell out this pot. But I got a pot. Okay, so go ahead and turn it down. I know how black folks like to put stuff on high. Stop cooking shit on high. That's why you should be burnt. Slow cook some stuff, okay? So, again, catch this flower that's about to fall. Mm, mm, mm. We have a lot of service interruptions today, but it's okay. So, regular flour. Y'all don't laugh with this damn shit fall, okay? So, this is all the juice from the stewed turkey wings that we're gonna make with the gravy. I try to get all of it in now. Cause y'all know y'all want some, and I know I love me some gravy. Be activating the hell out of the um, Jamaicans. Um, can I have some more gravy, please? That, dry, that rice look real dry. I need some wet. <laughs> my favorite Jamaican restaurant in Miami is Dutch Pot. Dutch Pot. I only go to the one on Broad Boulevard. That was the original one. And they food be so, oh, this food be so, 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 so good. Oof. <sighs> yep. I'll be seeing them shortly. I go to Dutch Pot before I go to anybody's house or any appointment, period. Okay, so I basically have all the juice in there. <sighs> so, we're doing the flour. So. Flour, regular flour, Walmart. Walmart, great value. I'm go ahead and shake this in here. Shake, shake, shake. If you want it real thick, I still suggest you don't put it all at one lump, lock. Like I said, this is how I make my gravy. You can use a strainer because, you know, flour does make lumps. Or you just want to be like me and I stand here and smush them down so they are gone. So I have the oven down too low. As you can see, it does not take that long to get the lumps out. You got me no help down here. Okay, not my daughter say I'm in full uniform or whatever. Cute. Okay, so. <laughs> Back to, okay, and as you can see, if my daughter comes closer, come baby. See how quick it got thick? There's no lumps. So you always wanna use the juice that was made with your meats to make your gravy. You do not want to make another gravy and then add it to your meat. In my opinion, sometimes when people do that, you can tell because the food is unbalanced and it becomes salty. All seasonings do not go together. Some seasons, if you combine it, will make your food salty as hell. And you didn't even use salt. But the combination that you made makes your food salty. A lot of you guys probably don't even know that. Like, damn, it's salty. For some reason, I ain't used no salt. No, you combine two, of, two ingredients that did not work for each other. Okay, and as you can see... 
You see how it didn't even take that long. My gravy is thick. So I'm going to go ahead and warm this back up. If I wanted it thicker, let me see what my daughter say. I should put it thicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. The, the, the yeah. And then I'm going to have to add water and I ain't going to want to do that. So, now, the gravy is done. That didn't even take, what, five minutes? Okay, so, this is, let me see what's the size. Okay, so this is a 5.5 cup that I actually use to measure stuff. This is a two ounce cup, but this is an actual serving, I mean the side containers where I put the little juice in. This I use for salad dresses, but I also use it every now and then for measurement. So, yep. And here is the gravy. It's nice. It has a good coat. So now I'll go ahead and pour it back in these food turkey rings. Oh, you pour it back in them? Yep. Mmm. Mmm. See how good that look? They do like oxtails too. Yeah, they do like oxtails, but they're not. Oxtails are too expensive in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> Baby, told you I had a fifty dollar bag. I asked the man what was the meat at. Okay. But as you can see, they are falling off the bone. Tender. 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 Show it again. Tender. Back it up again. Tender. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the top back on that. Let that sit. Now, we're going to see how much longer we got for this rice. It does not say. I'm going to go ahead and clean up because I do have orders. <sighs> Let's see. Still gotta finish my pork sauce because people call me not that. You, you can show them the big pot that I just turned off. Well, honey, just. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Today is my sixth day at work. I will be there with bells on. I will be getting off early. They'll be there with. Ooh. Oh my God, this is. Okay. So. Get all this out the way. Since I'm adding, I do have an order for shrimp. So, in preparation of that, I know I have, this is how I get it out. And this is what I call the line up. I line my plates up. You can zoom it out. You gotta pinch it. Nope. I see my titties. My boobalas. That's what I see. That's how you do it. 